Hello, STEM Nation. Jeff here, and welcome to episode number 48 of STEM on Fire, where we interview practicing professionals in the area of science, technology, engineering, and math to help guide students interested in STEM careers. If you like what you hear, please share it with a friend. Now let's get fired up today with our guest, Hi, and I hope our chat will help ignite your passion towards a STEM career. Hai Chen earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering from the University of Kansas. He has parlayed his education into many entrepreneurial ventures. Welcome to the show. Hi, fill in any gaps and share a bit of your personal life. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, happy to be here, Jeff. Thanks for uh, reaching out and talking to this most unlikely of engineers. Thanks, Hai, for being on here. And so you've got an aerospace engineer, and you are the first aerospace engineer on the podcast so could you give us some examples of what the career opportunities are and what kind of what kind of companies actually hire aerospace engineers? Yeah, uh, actually, aerospace engineering is a vast field. Uh, when you're in the discipline, you learn a whole lot of structures, dynamics, mechanics, in addition to metallic microstructures, uh, uh, programming systems. So it really runs a whole gambit of many of engineering, uh, all different engineering disciplines. Um, so your opportunities are vast. In addition, to all the different disciplines, you also learn aerodynamics, you know, hydrodynamics, and fluid flow on top of things. So from a career perspective, what type of companies hire aerospace engineers? Your traditional aerospace companies, you would think of like defense contracting or Cessna, Spirit Air Systems, Boeing. That's a given for sure. But one likely ones, you would think like automakers or chemical or pipe manufacturers, these things, uh, these companies will require some sort of fluid analysis, some sort of flow, or even like, you know, programming specific math problems to challenge and to solve. And aerospace engineering actually plays a big part in that. Okay, thanks for that. Hi. And so you, you got your aerospace engineering degree. You did some internships or co-oping back in the day. And you determined from that that maybe aerospace engineering isn't what you want to do as a profession. So could you, you know, give us a little story on that? Yeah, that's actually pretty funny. Um, and so in my engineering internship, I was working as a traditional engineer. You know, you're doing your calculations, you solve your important problem, then you turn it in. I realized I really enjoy engaging with people. And I really enjoyed building a lot of social communities, both professional and personal, and being able to solve problems on a strategic scale. And initially, engineering is all about understanding a specific problem in great detail and focusing on those details one little bit at a time. And I realized I wanted to just kind of skip through that phase and go to, you know, larger systems. So could you take us through your career path? Uh, yeah. Um, when I initially finished school, I realized I didn't want to be a, an engineer in the traditional sense, in the traditional track. Uh, but I realized the value of my degree, and I still wanted to use it. So I ended up joining an international automation company and industrial automation. And so my job primarily was to consult and run sales for a variety of automation inspection equipment. And my job essentially was to go around the world and see, well, around the U.S. really, see how everything is made from silicon wafers, microprocessors to satellite power systems to, let's say, uh, Taco Bell cups and uh, how to cast engines and everything. And so I would go in, analyze the process, figure out how everything's made and make recommendations based on my understanding, both engineering wise. And then I would speak with the you know, C-level executives making financial cases for capital improvements, make engineering decisions with the engineering managers, and then speak with the maintenance workers on implementing these changes. So from an aerospace perspective, you're not actually using your aerospace degree, but you're using, it sounds like, many aspects of your STEM curriculum. Is that correct? Absolutely. Engineering is all about, at the base, at the core of everything, is problem solving. Is You have to identify what the problem is, and then understand enough in intricate detail to be able to fully define the path and the process to help address that problem. And so whether you're using your discipline directly or not, it's the entire, the entire process of how to break down a problem, how to understand it, and then how to tackle it. That's going to carry you through no matter what you do in the future, whether it's you know, sales, marketing, entrepreneurship, or engineering. So hi, what would you describe as your specific area of expertise now? Things that I really enjoy the most right now is essentially community building. It's driving growth. And I'm, I'm kind of a growth strategy consultant right now, working with uh, kind of along, along the lines of behavioral marketing, uh, behavior economics, helping people make better decisions and through asking the right questions. 
So that seems really, really, really far away from a STEM curriculum. But how did your STEM curriculum help you get to the point where you are today? Uh, I feel like having an engineering degree, first and foremost, it's it's a challenge. It's not an easy degree. But at the same time, when you have that uh, degree in your hands, it gives you a sense of implicit validation. I mean, having just having someone speak to you and knowing that they're an engineer, that they've been through the rigors of this academic process gives you an automatic sense of respect and understanding and gives you the deference to be able to make your point. So, hi, this is pretty far away from from a STEM curriculum, and, and STEM is all about solving problems and need to learn a lot on the job. So from a community building standpoint, what kind of problems are you solving and how did that STEM problem solving curriculum help you specifically today? Um, I feel like, you know, problem solving is at its core. Oh, I think engineering at its core is solving problems and learning to be able to fully break down what a problem is and clearly defining what each step and what your objectives are is an essential tool for any facet, I mean, for any career you're looking at. And engineering definitely provided a significantly more profound foundation for this process. What is one thing that really has you fired up today? Communication. I feel like, you know, the I feel like the world is just hungering for chances of authentic connection and communicating with each other. And we need more of this. And yet we have so many titles and labels and divisions among us that we're unable to communicate clearly. And so I'm trying to I'm working my best to basically break through all the different barriers. Okay, hi. And we're going to change gears here a little bit. Could you take us to an aha moment you've had something in your personal life or your professional life and tell us a story and how you turned that aha moment into success? One of the aha moments was actually realizing that I didn't want to be a traditional engineering track. I mean, I am most of the way through engineering school in my junior year and realizing that this, I did not want to be a traditional engineer, but I was so far down the engineering path, what am I going to do? And then I started looking at all different, you know, speaking with peers, speaking with uh, uh, other mentors that were engineers or what I jokingly call recovering engineers, that they taken their engineering career and have done other amazing things to it. Uh, I have uh, other friends that are used to be electrical engineers that are now doing amazing marketing work. I have friends who were who are do, were also aerospace engineers who are now who is owns a well, an agency consulting with other companies and a brewer with a brewery. So, hi, what you're doing today is completely different than aerospace engineering. And I'll say that you didn't actually use your aerospace engineering degree directly, except maybe in the internships. So if you had to go back to college and pick a degree, would you still go aerospace engineering or would you pick something else like business or marketing? Uh, Looking back at those options, I would 100% go back and stick with my engineering degree. And the reason I say this is because when I was actually in school, and figuring out what I want to do in the future, I actually petitioned to be in some upper level business and marketing courses, economics and everything too. Um, Now, being in those advanced courses, I had to petition the professor and the school to allow me in there because I didn't have the so-called prerequisites. Now, having been allowed in those classes and sat through them, I realized what a world of difference it was in terms of the rigor, the, the complexity, and the level of education and, and the depth of the problem solving that was being taught in those schools versus in engineering. And let's just say it's, uh, it's not quite the same, and engineering was definitely superior in that respect. And I'm carrying you know, the, the benefits of that process with me right now. All right. And speaking of college high, going back to high school, heading off to college, what are some things that you, would help, that you think would help STEM Nation launch into college successfully? I feel like, you know, if, if I wanted to, if I would have known, I would have jumped in internships earlier. Try to get as much real world experience as you can. Um, have a chance to, you know, either work in engineering companies or just offer free work. Not, there's nothing that replaces actually a real world experience and figure out, A, what you want to do or just as importantly, what you don't want to do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I concur with that high, you know, internships help you figure out what you don't want to do. And that's probably the most important thing is figuring out things you really don't want to do so you don't get stuck in a career doing that and you end up being unhappy. So hi. Going from college off to your your career, what are some attributes you think you need to have to be successful transitioning from college into your career? Going from college to your career, 
initially, you have to be hungry. I would hope anyone coming fresh out of school is hungry to learn, hungry to advance, and have the humility to be able to take and listen and take those advices. Uh, understand that there is a system in place, whether it's perfect or not. Learn how the system works, and then put your mark on it because you're going to have a fresh perspective that's going to be uh, that's going to be new and different. All right. Hi. Thanks for those great insights. And we're going to take a quick pause to thank our sponsor, Audible, who's offering a free audiobook. You can head over to stemonfirebook.com. That's stemonfirebook.com to get a free audiobook of your choosing. If you decide to cancel within 30 days, there's no cost and you keep the audiobook. All right. Hi. Are you ready for the lightning round? Uh, yeah, let's go for it. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? You know, I've received a lot of advice over my time. And uh, I feel like one of the most important ones is that is, is uh, perseverance is really sticking it through what you're doing. Even if you don't enjoy what you're doing, become good at it, understand it fully, and achieve that some level of mastery. So even when you move on from it, you have lessons you have learned that you can apply to future sessions. And because you don't know what's gonna happen in the future that you know what you're learning now could be potentially helpful in. And if you become good at it, you leave a trail of respect and understanding that's gonna launch you forward to the next level. And what's a personal habit that contributes to your success? I would say a big part of it is staying curious. It's a desire to know how things work and why things work, whether it's an engineering system or or people or humans as a system. And so just wanting to find things out, keep asking questions, keep asking the right questions. And then instead of just posing the question, go find some answers, whether it be online, looking up research or talking to people. Uh, you never know what insights you can uncover. And what's your favorite internet resource or phone app? Um, I think this might be cliche, but I feel like Google and YouTube are an amazing resource because it's a way to connect you with a literal world of information and knowledge, whether it be you know instructional videos or a forum for a discussion of a specific field that you don't know yet. And what's one book you would recommend and why? One of the books I recommend to everyone is, uh, this is not necessarily a STEM book, but it is relating with self-awareness and psychology and behavioral economics. And it's called You Are Not So Smart. You're not so smart. We will have that in the show notes. And hi, you provide lots of value, but as we wrap up here, can you share a parting piece of guidance for STEM Nation? And then we will say goodbye. Uh, Yeah, I feel like you can't underscore, undervalue how important a degree in STEM can be to your life. I mean, in addition to everything you learn, you gain an immediate credibility with anyone you speak to. So even if you want to switch a track in the future, it becomes a launch pad for you to be able to carry through and achieve that goal. I think one thing you should really continue to strive for is personal growth. Um, Build your own personal network. A recent book by David Burkus came out and revealed how important distant acquaintances are to your future. I mean, it's not just the fact that, you know, people you know affect your immediate future and give you opportunities. It's your friend of a friend. And honestly, your third degree, your friend of a friend's friend, that's going to be your future. Because everyone you know that's close to you will actually share the same network, same clusters of knowledge and connections that you do already. It's those distance and dormant acquaintances and those ties that lead you to amazing opportunities that you don't even know yet. So cultivate those. All right. And with that, hi, we will say goodbye. All right. Thanks so much. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed our chat today with Hi. Head over to stemonfire.com, subscribe to the email list to keep up with the latest happenings, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast player. And if you like what you hear here, please share it with a friend. Tune in next week where we talk with Dr. Witty, who is a college professor. Until next time, I hope this chat has helped ignite your passion towards a STEM career.